Hello, uh, this is uh, Bookish Talk. Uh, today we have, uh, uh, today our guest is Richard Fitzmore. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, two of his bindings that won three prizes uh, uh, from uh, uh, Designer Book Bookbinders uh, UK competition. Uh, hi, Richard. Hi. Uh, I'm Stepan. I'm joining you from Versailles. <laughs> and uh, my co-host is Pavel. He joins us from Moscow. Pavel, hi. Hey, Pavel. So, uh, Richard, uh, I'm very glad to, to have you here, and uh, I hope it will open up an, an, a new series of uh, videos for iBookbinding with the people who uh, got, got these awards uh, this year. Uh, but your case is, you're, you're the first guest uh, among the, the prize winners of uh, Design Bookbinders of this year, and you've got three prizes uh, for two of your books. Can you talk a bit about this and uh, uh, what are the prizes okay. and okay well if I, I start with the with a set book which was of mice and men by john steinbeck um that won the the mags prize um and like with all the way i normally do a book is to read it right through first without taking notes or anything and then i'll go back and read it and make some notes and then let it sort of percolate for a bit um, but with Mice and Men, the design really came by complete accident. I'd read the book, I'd read it the second time, made some notes, and then about a week later, I was clearing up, I was tidying what I call my resources, my wife calls junk, but you know, <laughs> that's a whole new <laughs> kettle of fish, and I found, which I'd forgotten about completely, this, which is a cigarette card album um, it, and it's got bird's eggs which is if you're into birds I suppose it's interesting but I didn't find that particularly interesting but then I realized that it had bees which is of the 20s and 30s these were actually published in 1934 men was written in 1937 but it's talking about the, the Great Depression of the 90, early 1930s. So time-wise, they're great. And then if you know the plot, but basically Lenny and George are the two itinerant workers. And Lenny is intellectually challenged, so to say. So George has to look after him, basically, and, you know, he tell when they go for a job, he always says to Lenny, don't say a word, I'll do all the talking, you just keep quiet. And Lenny is a very big guy. And he's a very loving guy, but he has no concept of his own strength. He has a pet mouse, which he just crushes through stroking it too hard. And Curly, the son of the guy, the, the farm they go to, his wife is quite flirtatious and obviously, you know, a bit bored around the farm. And basically in the plot, Lenny ultimately kills her, not through any design, but simply because he's stroking her hair because he likes to stroke, whether it be mice, rabbits or whatever. And at this point she just says, no, sort of stop. And he panics and kills her. But the other theme of the, one of the themes of the book is that everybody has a sort of a vision of the El Dorado they're going to go to in the end. For George and Curly, they're going to have a farm of their own and they're going to breed rabbits, and this is all going to be marvelous. And for Curly's wife, and we, we never know her name, she's just the wife, she, she always says, I could have been in movies, I could have been a movie star. And this is, this is her dream mm -hmm. that never becomes realized. So I decided then to base it around, in a way, her story about becoming a film star. So that gave me the idea of using the cigarette cards. And then once I'd gone down that route, I then thought, well, in that case, we're talking about rectangles, basically. So my first sort of rough idea was like this. 
which again was using some of the cards, but also playing cards, because they feature quite a lot. Blue for denim for the workers, and then I, you know, a mouse and a rabbit. That idea didn't last very long. I, I should point at this uh, at this stage that I'm not. It is I, when I'm doing a design, I can't just sit down and sketch something out. I'm not very good at it. I really have to usually do something practical, sticking paper on other bits of paper. But is it is it your usual process that you switch uh, many different uh, uh, ideas of design, uh, or usually you are sort of finding something and going forward with it? Usually, I know it's it's usually first idea is usually completely wrong. It's usually about the third or fourth idea that I finally sort of hone it down. Okay. <laughs> So and then so then I refined it somewhat more and then I got rid of the mice and the rabbits and decided to concentrate on faces. And then at this point I was deciding, trying to decide what sort of structure to do. And I'd normally my designs go right across the board, but in this case, because they were sort of sectional, I decided to do a Bridell binding, which I hadn't really done before in any anger. So I made a maquette of the whole binding, which turned out to be this. It's just a just a blank book. So I've got quite a lot of blank notebooks at the moment. <laughs> things I've tried out, but it did, and I obviously haven't used the real cigarette cards because I'd only got one of the ones that I wanted to use. But it gave me an idea of the way I was going to go. And after that, I then finished up with the finished binding, which is this. That's that's interesting. So, uh, what are what are your plans for for the dummy uh, uh, version of the book and for the final version of the book? Do you have any plans? Well, the the final version, um, designer bookbinders are doing an online exhibition called DEF, Design Equals Function. Uh, I'm an essential of designer bookbinders, so I, this will be one of the books in that exhibition coming to you shortly. Uh, the maquette I'll just keep as one of my notebooks for I do, for, I, you know, I keep notebooks all the time of ideas and sketches and things. Uh, you mentioned you are a licensed of uh, designer bookbinders. Could you please tell us about your uh, uh, your uh, your involvement with the organization? When did you join? Why did you join? What? Uh, how, how do you see uh, uh, the uh, the mission of designer bookbinders? What is it for you? And and what is this uh, licentiate status? Because I'm sure not not everyone knows. Yeah, what yes, it is. yes. Yes. Um, I'm unusual compared with quite a few people in that I took up bookbinding basically when I retired. I'd done, as I spent most of my life as a sound designer in radio, I'd been doing evening classes in bookbinding because I'd always been interested, I collected books from an early age and I'd started doing evening classes, but then I decided to take early retirement and I did a one day class with Cathy Abbott and it was whilst working with Cathy that I started entering the designer bookbinders competition without any great success. But one of the great advantages of the exhibition is that when you go to pick up your book, which obviously didn't work this year because it's, um, it was online, but normally you can go and pick up your book and have it reviewed by two or three of the fellows who will give you a critique of it which is always very useful. And it was during one of those sessions that um, one of the fellows, Lester Capon, said to me, and I hadn't won any prizes or anything, so you know, I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a go. And Lester said, well, have you thought about applying for licentiate? Now, the licentiate of designer book binders, basically what they're looking for is potential, shall we say. You know, you've got five years before you have to apply to be a fellow. So you've got five years to basically learn more about technique, design, 
um, you have a couple of mentors from the fellowship and it, it's, it's an, sort of an apprenticeship, basically. Um, you don't necessarily become a fellow at the end. I mean, I may not become a fellow, but even if I don't, it's been tremendous for me because it, it's pushed me. It makes you, you know, it makes you do bindings. It makes you be, try and get better. Which I think is very important. Okay, this, this is an interesting perspective. So, uh, so it's more like, it, it, more like what it gives to you. Uh, and not you know not not to the society or something like that. So. Well, I do. I am. I mean, I do work for the society as well. I mean, I'm the copy editor of the new book binder, which is, and I also I'm this year I'm running London Craft Week, which is in October, where we have an ex we're going to have an exhibition at Mags Brothers, the um, London bookseller, and we're going to do workshops. So as part of a licentiate, it also you also have to contribute. The society. Yeah, I, I didn't do it as, as sort of an insult or something. I mean that no, no, uh, it, not, no, no. <laughs> it 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 really pushes you to to explore more and to experiment and to try something new and to widen your uh, you know yeah, absolutely. understanding of bookbinding. And this is very yeah. interesting because I I didn't really think about it in this in this way. And uh, well. This is great uh, that it works for you. So uh, mm. <laughs> I'm really happy yeah, to, see, yeah, to yeah. hear that. Yeah. And uh, on, on the other hand, it's uh, uh, something that we are trying to show with our podcast that uh, there, is, there is really no age for book bending. You can start doing, making books when you are five. You can start making books as a student. You can uh, decide uh, to choose book binding as your hobby or even as your profession uh, when you're retiring. So. Uh, your yeah, example is, yes, is, yes. is really great yes. in, in the context of our podcast, so uh, thanks for that as well. As long as my eyes hold out, I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. But actually, I'm very lucky because I'm short-sighted, so I take my glasses off. I can see very well when I'm doing minute work. <laughs> uh, speaking of hobbies and professions, uh, which is it for you? Uh, is it purely a hobby or has it become a source of... Achievement? It's become more, no, it's not a hobby anymore. It is a semi-profession, shall we say. I mean, I'm very lucky I've got a pension. I don't actually have to make money out of bookbinding, which is an advantage for me because it means that I can explore doing different structures. I don't, you know, and I'm doing them, I don't have to think, well, I know this particular design or style will sell. I can tr try completely different books, different ways of doing things without that nagging thing at the back of my mind, I've got to make money out of this. So it frees me up in that sense, artistically and creatively. So are you already in this, because we, we discussed this uh, with uh, some other uh, uh, book binders that uh, they have this sort of packed schedule for, I don't know, upcoming 12 to 24 months uh, and uh, uh, they uh, cannot really fit anything uh, within this schedule. They do, can do not usually have any any of uh, personal projects or something like that. Are you close to this stage yet? Do you plan to be there, well, or you you want to keep it fun and you know, <laughs> casual? Well, I'd like to keep it fun, but I mean, I have just been doing. I'm in the middle of doing six commissions for customers in in China. So I've done three books for um, Purple Heron books in Shanghai. And I've done, um, they, they were roughly the, basically the same design. And I've got three more to do of which I've done one. So I've got two more to do by, by August. And there's also the Designer Book Binders International Competition book, which is also going to be done by August. So I've got three design bindings to do by August. And you think, oh, well, that's fine. And then suddenly you think, well, I should be merely into June. <laughs> Time goes very quickly. Yeah, that's true. Uh, are you working from home? Do you have uh, your own workshop? Yes, I mean, I've got my own sort of workshop here. Sorry, I, technically, it's been difficult at the moment because we, our broadband has been is broken. We're on cable and there's been building work outside the house and the, the cable got damaged. So at the moment, I've got my phone tethered to the laptop, which sort of works, but... So, um, yes, I've, I've got the room here, 
I do, but I've also got a garden studio mm -hmm. where I do all my painting, air, airbrushing, noxious chemicals, etc. So okay, I've got two so spaces. So I'm, 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 I'm well placed. That, that's what I'm aiming for, to have a clean workshop and a dirty workshop. It's, and, it's, uh, very, it's, a, it's a good way to go. I, I can recommend yeah. it. I, I, I sort of have a cleanish workshop at the moment. Yeah, well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, are you I based have to in say, London? are you based in London or are you in? I'm based uh, in London, West London. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you're uh, going to be uh, leading a workshop. How big an ev event will it be? Are you making that uh, regularly anyway? Is it something you do? This is um, London Craft Week, which is happens every year. There are venues across London um, doing all sorts of things from. Um, Birdies, uh, rifle making to ceramics. Um, and designer bookbinders usually have an exhibition and run some workshops. So this year, I think, um, I, I'm not actually, I'm running it. I'm not actually taking workshops. But I think there will be four people running workshops of maybe, you know, over three days with about 12, 10 to 12 people in each workshop. People basically have never done bookbinding before. Is they're tasters. To see how it, yeah. and it's a good way of getting the general public more interested in bookbinding. Do you yourself teach? Um, no, no, I haven't. Nobody's asked me, so. Uh, no. Would you like to? Uh, I, I think I'm probably too old to start. Like, to be honest, I, you know, I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, should we maybe uh, move on to your second book? Uh, can yeah, could sure. you please tell us a bit about it and about the, the prizes it, it, it won? My second book um, is Hokusai, which I hope, I think Zoom doesn't like the, the whiteness of the leather, but I um, hope you can see that. So it's, it's leather because, uh, because, yeah, that was one of my questions. <laughs> I no. wasn't sure. It's, um, I should explain that Hokusai is actually, it's a poem by David Burnett, an English poet, with lino cuts by Hui Fang Li. So this book, I was completely, um, my design is based around those lino cuts. That was my, you know, that was my starting point. And this is the structure is what's known as a Yamato Toji binding, Japanese binding, style binding. Which again, I'm a, I'm a Western binder doing a Japanese style, but equally it's a Western poem about Japanese artists. So I thought, well, that's-, so that's it's, it's fitting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with this again, I made a maquette. Um, in cloth, because actually the problem I did find with doing Hokusai is that basically this design is, they'd be done in cloth or paper possibly, but never leather in the traditional Japanese binding. And it was harder with the leather because of the joints. I mean, it worked in the end, but I did have to do quite a bit of pairing and getting the joints to work properly. But no, the, it's, it's Alan Todd Goat, which it nearly got thrown out of the window several times because basically you turn round and by when you turn back again, it's got a bit of dirt on it or a bit of a smudge on it. It's, you have to be very careful with it. And on the back... Did you succeed on your first run or... Uh... You, 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 you had to, or did you have to redo it? <laughs> as, as before, I made a maquette, which gave me, I mean, this is just one of the boards, but, um, so basically the lines were, were fine, but I wasn't happy with this, which again is um, Mount Fuji, but with white leather and just sort of bits of airbrushing along the bottom, which was then when I, and also, this is just white leather rather than Alan Tord leather. And it's not actually dyed, it's, it's more of a sort of coating. So as soon as you try and pair it, the coating just sort of chips off 
it doesn't the dye doesn't go penetrate the leather which is why i then went to the alum tord and instead of the representation of map Fuji, that was when i went to the this is tooled separate tools you can see that in um, palladium I'm doing quite a lot of tooling anyway so it's always you know i enjoy gold and palladium tooling so you know that's my fallback if i can't think of anything else one of the prizes is one of the sort of most important prizes uh, of all the competition, the Close Workers, uh, the second called Close Workers Prize. Uh, and uh, uh, so congratulations on that. And uh, is, there, is there any feedback from uh, the companies or from the people who are uh, giving other prizes, for example, like Max Brothers or uh, Shepherds, do they tell why they made this choice, why they chose uh, your binding and not somebody else, and uh, do they give you some feedback or something? How does it usually work? Um, not generally, though. In fact, um, I, I, I saw Ben Mags yesterday, and he judged the, you know, the of mice and men, so we were able to talk about the binding. So, but, I mean, the Cloth Workers Guild, no, you don't really get much feedback. Mm -hmm. so maybe maybe if you win first prize you do but not a second prize okay so we'll probably ask you this question in the future okay yes <laughs> uh, I, I have one open i have won first prize before but i oh. didn't get any feedback then either so. oh okay okay sorry uh, uh, have you uh, have you ever sold anything to them i uh, i happen to know they have a collection of uh, uh, contemporary book bindings, which is very impressive. Uh, yes, and I know they do a lot of commissions, but um, no, I haven't. Not for uh, me yet. No. Uh, have you it's something uh, to aspire to. Have you sold to any other institutions or libraries? Can anyone, uh, can people see your work in public collections? Uh, the only one is the National Library of Scotland has one of my bindings because they run something called the Elizabeth Souter competition. And I won a prize in that. And as part of that, they take the book into their, their collection. But that's the only one that's in a public place. So how long was your path uh, since you start of, started to actively uh, do your work, book buying work to the moment when you got your first prize or maybe to the moment when you uh, realized that, well, now I really can make books. It was when it was about four years, four years after I retired, four years of working with Kathy, that um, I entered the Society of Bookbinders International Competition with the binding of Shakespeare's sonnets. And that I got third prize in that. And then the year after, I, I got the craft, the amateur craft award, the Elizabeth Souter Prize. So that was at that point I thought, oh, maybe I can do this. Uh, and uh, how many design, uh, designer book bindings would you uh, say you've made over the over the years? Over the well, over the ten years since I started seriously, maybe twenty or so. So about uh, two a year. Two, two, three, two or three a year. But at the moment, I'm. I mean, that's increasing. I'm now doing maybe four or five a year. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, with that output, do you have to work every day? How 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 long does it take you? Uh, yeah, make? what's 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 your your standard bookbinding routine? Um, I I usually bind, you know, virtually every day. Um, it's probably I always say well, it's it's it's, it's about half time. About half my day is spent bookbinding in one form or another. Has it been increasing, increasing as you have to uh, uh, complete? Yes, 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 yeah. And, um, you know, I, I suppose like lots of us, it's the deadline that makes you do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, have you uh, 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 were present uh, at the uh, award ceremony? Were you watching what they were showing? Uh, I mean, yes, yes. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Yes. I remember you maybe even with a glass of wine like most of us <laughs> i remember that uh, yeah. <laughs> yes yes i usually i usually i quite often have a glass of wine in my hand 
So what do you think about uh, other prize winners? Who were your favourites? Miranda Kemp with the um, strips of, I thought that was beautiful. We, we really hope to talk uh, to Miranda maybe early in June uh, and discuss, discuss her yeah, well, work. I, I hope you do, yes. I think she's very interesting work. Yeah, I, I know it's, it's a tough question because, uh, well, I'd have to uh, look at look again, and then I could remind myself. To be honest, I, my mind isn't working. First, well. first, yeah, first you usually need to remind, and then uh, you, you don't want to, you know, to talk about uh, some of people and to forget about others. And uh, well, yes, yeah, Bible. So, <laughs> yeah. so we have, it's a trap. <laughs> we have to ask yes, this trap question in advance. <laughs> yeah. This is the lesson I've just learned. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So um, I, I I I didn't know. It's I think we we discussed some most of the things we wanted to 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 discuss and to ask you. And uh, uh, thanks for showing some of your uh, you know test uh, tries and uh, mockups and other things. I I think it's very important uh, to show uh, other book binders. Uh, and amateurs and even well, professional ones, I mean, uh, how the creative process goes, because uh, it's it's very different for different people, and uh, uh, you always you know can find something new in in other person's work. So. Well, I think I think the thing is that I mean a lot of people, a lot of bookbinders have been to art college, and I haven't. My background is drama, so for me, I mean I after I'd been with Kathy for five years, I've just spent five years getting to Mark Cochran. If I hadn't have been a licentiate, I wouldn't have gone, I don't think, because I don't have thought, I can't, you know, Mark's out of my league. I'm not, you know, artistic enough to do it. I did have to push myself. And I still have, I suppose, an inferiority complex because I haven't been to art college. You know, I haven't got that sort of background, which is maybe why designs have to be dragged out of me rather than pour out. It's 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 interesting that you mentioned Mark and uh, because uh, we, we spoke to him uh, several times and uh, yeah, I, yes, I, yeah I think I think more than once he uh, he told us that uh, in in his opinion uh, uh, there is always a chance you know to grow uh, the design talent to, and to and to you know to 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 learn how to uh, to to make designs and uh, uh, so he has. Uh, a lot of hope <laughs> for other people, I guess. <laughs> uh, he certainly inspired me, I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's also interesting that he's often, um, should, what should I say, dismissive of uh, of our arts school education, at least and at least in UK. But you can you can clearly see the positive effects of it on other people. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think so. I think you know, it would have been nice to have done it, but you know, I had another life. <laughs> so, every every one of us has has their own path, and it leads somewhere. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. great. It led you to to uh, these experiments with books and uh, beautiful books. Uh, so thank you. And uh, now we have you on our podcast, so it's good for us now, <laughs> and hopefully for some of well, us. If it's been all right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Pavel, do you have anything else to 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 ask? Or no, I can only say say thank you. Uh, you are uh, you are a really inspiring person. I think your your story is very important to get uh, 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 to get out. In, uh, uh, I, uh, I mean, so many people think that it's too late to start uh, uh, to start. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the, only, the only thing I would say, I mean, and it's not a disadvantage really, but what I don't have for pe compared with people who've been doing it all their lives or you know, had a, an apprenticeship, trade apprenticeship, is that I haven't got, I've, to a certain extent, I've got that muscle memory to do things, but it does take me longer because you know, I haven't spent five years doing nothing but sewing end bands. So, I mean, I do find, I do find end bands are my least favourite part of bookbinding, I have to say. Maybe because, you know, my fingers aren't as nimble as they could be or, you know, but I do find, I do, when I do an end band, I do have to sort of psych myself up for it for at least a day beforehand. And I don't, you know, 
I do them, but I, I can't say I enjoy doing them. And it's the things like that, that it does take me longer, I have to say, probably than, you know, if I was trying to make a living out of it completely, then I think I would probably struggle because I wouldn't be fast enough. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I had some experience uh, uh, teaching binding classes uh, while I still lived in, in Moscow and uh, uh, I should say that uh, most of my clients uh, were out of uh, two major groups uh, uh, either young people uh, between I don't know maybe 17 and 25 and yeah. uh, uh, people who are at their retirement age or closing their retirement age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, what, I, I, I don't know how your uh, studying process opened, but uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's quite important for uh, providing students to listen to what their teachers are uh, saying them about the routines and uh, uh, some uh, practices that uh, take time. Because I, I had this one pretty awful experience with one of the students of mine who uh, uh, always tried to, I, I'm not sure if he, he always tried to uh, make the things he, uh, the way he wanted to, to, to do. But uh, uh, for, for example, uh, the, the most, uh, the, 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 the main, not the main, but one of the major problems was when he was cutting something. And uh, he was always applying a lot of pressure during the cuts. And I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I always yeah. comment like, uh, you should better make 10 uh, uh, slight cuts uh, and uh, then, then your cut will be straighter. It wouldn't uh, mm -hmm. uh, tear up the, the material or something like that. And, and it's, it's, it's much more uh, easier to, uh, to break the material if you are applying too much force to it when you're cutting with a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I guess uh, you're a good listener as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you you have to sort of think, well, okay, you have to persevere. Yeah. I, think it's Samuel, <laughs> I think it's Samuel Beckett, you know, the sort of fail better is the my motto. <laughs> Next time I'll fail better. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for this talk. And, uh, okay, for, well, thank uh, you for your books and uh, I hope uh, to see you on our podcast in the future, maybe talking about some other of your bindings or maybe- Well, it'd be a pleasure, yeah. Or okay. maybe we will ask ourselves uh, for, for a workshop tour or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'd like to say thanks to our uh, community viewers of uh, this video, our patrons on Patreon uh, who support us with their money and uh, make it possible for us to edit these videos. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, see you next time. Bye. Hey, bye. Bye. bye.